ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel uh we're gonna be doing some more ukraine military breakdowns if you're brand new to the channel i'm paul u.s army combat veteran spent 12 months in afghanistan as a platoon leader earned a bronze star combat action badge and the most important recognition of all bringing all my soldiers back in one piece personally led over like 300 combat patrols so i feel like i am qualified to weigh in on at least some facets of this sort of operation um one of the things i will say first off i have pre-screened this video to make sure there's nothing uh grisly in it um but if you don't want to see uh you know real war military operations probably not the video for you um also i will say that I'll, while i try to keep my comments pretty neutral uh and just add understanding um some of the things that i talk about uh may be critical uh and you know when i was deployed one of the most important things that we did every day after every single patrol was talk about what we did well and what we did poorly did it on a personal level at a unit level and though that is so important to military operations because it lets you not make the same mistakes again and again and it keeps you ahead of the enemy because the enemy is always learning what you're doing and so you always have to be moving on to the next better way of doing things so not doing anything to to these guys that i wouldn't do to myself that said i've i've looked at this video and i don't think i'm gonna have a lot of negative comments from the get-go so this is from war leaks it is ukrainian soldier defending kiev area finds clear words for his enemy during combat let's get into it all right, so this is a Ukrainian mortar unit in action. It looks like they are in a up-armored truck of some kind. Usually these are... So typically what you would see, this platform here is, looks like a gunner's platform. Uh, they've got some sort of computer screen here for the TC. TC stands for truck commander, and it is usually the person who is not the driver, not the gunner, but is the person responsible for navigating, communicating, and is usually the senior non-commissioned officer uh, in the vehicle. Okay, so it says that they are a mortar team. For those of you that don't know, mortars are like best thought of as like a baby artillery piece. Uh, they are an indirect fire that... Uh, while they throw uh, 60 millimeter mortars, 60 millimeter explosive rounds, you'll see them in a second, and they have what's called a high angle of attack or a high angle trajectory. And what that means is that the mortars will cover a short distance, but they will do so by going very high up and coming down at a very steep angle. And that steep angle can provide one, a pretty good degree of precision. It can also, because it's so steep, it can be fired very close to the enemy. In contrast, artillery that has a lower angle, it needs to have a certain standoff distance for these rounds to travel in their arc, right? So mortars are a great way of providing indirect fire support to infantry troops uh, without having to go through the ponderous process of setting up and calling in artillery fire. Also, because mortars have such a high angle, they can reach enemy who might otherwise be in cover. For example, if there's, let's say, a building between the enemy and you, artillery fire, because of its arc, may actually give the enemy a level of protection in contrast a close mortar may actually be able to arc up and down right so mortars can sometimes be uh, more effective depending on the exact mechanics of the enemy's cover okay so a little bit of a gear breakdown this is a pretty uh high-end helmet right you can see it's got the cutaways that are usually reserved for uh active headphones these are headphones that are designed to block out the loudest noises of say gunfire but still allow lower volume noises like uh your squad leader shouting commands to get through uh it also has this very uh higher end uh, night vision device mount that you can just clip it in and bring the eyepiece right down over your eyes and your night vision is good to go 
So that tells me that this is probably a higher end unit. You also see they have the Ukrainian colors on their helmet. The only US forces I've seen do that have bright colors denoting uh, usually red, white, and blue or a small American flag have been special operations forces. And that's of course to help ensure friend and foe identification so that you know your your friends see that that <laughs> you're a friendly <laughs> uh yep fire mission so fire mission is just the term for a a set of indirect fire engagements right it means it means they're going to be putting some throwing some rounds so to speak with their mortar that's all that means all right so you can see he's got some morale patches on uh it looks like an rpg7 and maybe some sort of of uh you know pirate mustache beard combo that's what i look thick of when i look at that what's pretty fascinating is that he has two rounds for his uh assault rifle looks like the ukrainian uh vulcan or mom mamluk mamluk uh and it's a bullpup ak-74 conversion uh he also has it looks like a pistol round and maybe a flare is my guess this is like an old school soviet style flare uh flares are usually used to mark locations um or sort of signal hey i'm here uh some flares can actually like the U.S. military, we had flares that would actually launch um, a few dozen feet into the air or a few dozen meters into the air. And those would be used to signal things, usually in an emergency. So, for example, if you really if you were in danger of being overrun, like a patrol base or a patrol base came into contact, uh, their instructions were to always pop a red flare so that a friendly element who is maybe dismounted on a patrol could come and reinforce them or be a, a, a maneuver element. So you see, hopefully you understand a little bit of the principle going on here, which is that in military operations, in some ways you want to be seen. You want your location to be known to friendlies, right? And that means that friendlies know they can reach out to you for support. Friendlies know that you are in this area, so they know not to fire on it. Um, and it also lets, of course, your command know where you are so that they can best array the remain the other forces in the area. Uh, on the other hand, you want to be invisible to the enemy. <laughs> Yep, so they are unpacking their mortars. And you can see that's actually a pretty good shot of the uh, Vulcan, right? You can see it, it really is an AK style conversion. There's the AK safety, that's an AK magazine. It's just the trigger is in front, meaning that the whole weapon system is shorter because there's just less uh, of a buttstock, right? And there's a bunch of issues with um, bullpup style rifles. In this case, you can very clearly see that if you were to be like me, a left-handed firer, and you were to shoulder that rifle, the rounds would actually discharge directly into your face. And that can be a problem, not just because hot rounds in your face bad, but because those rounds can oftentimes not eject completely and jam up the barrel, right? Uh, again, with a full stock AK, the rounds will discharge in front of my, in my face, in the face of a left-handed fire. They'll discharge more clearly. Okay, here's what's also I think is really interesting about uh, Ukraine forces. And we've seen multiple videos in which they are actually doing operations with a cell phone. So it looks like, and this is pretty cool. So you can see, it looks like they're using a drone probably a commercial drone based on the fact that it's hooked up to a phone a commercial drone and it looks like a maybe a military grade or a ruggedized civilian grade uh control panel and they are watching the drone and they're doing uh what's sometimes called a, a leader's recon um and this is where right before you launch your mission and again i'm not an indirect fire guy so i'm sort of using small unit tactics uh to, to i'm trying to make the best analogies i can right obviously if you're an actual uh 11 charlie or a mortarman let me know in the comments what terminology i get wrong but 
it, that what they're doing is they're doing like a final leaders recon. They are getting eyes on their objective and they're saying, hey, we want you to hit this. Like, let's make sure everything we saw on the map is true. Hey, the last time we heard the enemy was in this location. But look, they've moved to the other side of the village. OK, they say, I know I need to change where my mortars are going to hit. Um, and because uh, you have a drone, what makes a drone so awesome is you can fly it again and again. You can actually have the drone in the air while your mortars are in flight, as long as you make sure they don't, they're not in each other's exact path. But you can actually watch your mortars hit and adjust your own fire in real time. Normally, what you rely on is actually someone else to watch your rounds hit. You'll rely on a forward observer or just an infantry squad who's in combat, and they will be the ones to call and say, hey, your mortars, basically, hey, your mortars landed 50 meters uh, north of your target. Bring it south 50 meters or bring it east 50 meters, right? And that process of getting your indirect fire slowly, ever more accurate until it's delivering rounds right on target is called bracketing. Okay, so there we go. Now they're launching. These are their 60 millimeter mortars. And you can see they've got their tube locked in. Okay, they're destroying enemy artillery. This is pretty bold, um, but like we talked about, in some ways, mortar fire can actually be more accurate than uh, artillery fire, or maybe not more accurate, but you can get way closer to the enemy and still deliver uh, lethal rounds in. What? Uh, okay, so what's different is the U.S. military and a better trained military will often have what's called counter battery fire and counter battery fire is where you if you have a radar system that's uh, sensitive enough you can detect the actual flight path of the rounds coming into your location and once you know that once that radar gets for example if it knows the mortar started here and it went here that can you can have a computer do the math and realize that the rest the mortar must have originated back here, right? So you get two points, you do the math, and you can tr back trace where the mortar is. Once you know the mortars, the attacking mortar's location, you can tune your artillery to fire back. And again, with technology, this can get faster and faster. We'll leave it at that. Um, so you don't want to linger in one place for too long if you are attacking someone with good counter battery fire uh, systems in place. But you see, these guys look like they are kind of in a dump and go mode, right? And that's probably why you'll see them just popping rounds off very quickly. Um, that's probably why they did the final scouting with the drone. They probably were just like, hey, instead of having to spend all this time bracketing our rounds, we are going to get as uh, the best location we can. We'll check it against the GPS maps and we will deliver precision fire one like one fire mission, no bracketing, just fire for effect right away. That's my guess. And then they were like, we're going to clear out immediately. Right, so they're not bracketing, they're not waiting for feedback, they're just putting more and more rounds down range. This, he's, he may be in reference to the fact that maybe their counter battery fire is not very good. Right, so he says flying above us and shooting the F knows where. That could be an analogy that he's saying, hey, these guys are just goofballs. Their counter battery fire sucks. Like they should have these radar systems. Uh, they should, or at least sometimes you can even... I think, I believe that before we had sensitive radar systems, you can actually look at where the mortar landed um, and look at sort of the trench and be like, oh, okay, like we, we have a good guess as to the angle that it came in at and you can kind of backtrace it. Um, but yeah, they sound like they're just really, they're like, he's, he's probably just like, these guys are goofs. Like they can't, they can't engage counter battery fire. One thing I will say it, it, that they drilled into us when we were deployed is 
wear your wear your safety glasses. I hated it. I hated wearing the ballistic glasses like a lot. Uh, we all did. Um, but now that I'm older, I'm like, man, it would have been a really dumb reason to lose like a squad leader because they got a stupid fragment of dirt in their eye. I need to make you come, though. Можно. It's tough to tell if these guys are special forces or just a very well-equipped regular. I, I feel like they're probably um, some sort of special operations forces just based on the fact that their their gear is kind of hodgepodge. Uh, as a general principle, you have the elite special operations forces tend to have a rule of like bring the essential gear, but do what works, right? Do what do what, what works for you, you know? Organize your kit the way that feels good for you get your helmet, your your outfit, the way that feels good for you, right? You know how it is. Sometimes we've all got the one friend who just seems to never feel the cold. Uh, and you've got the one friend who's cold if it dips below about, you know, 60 degrees or, uh, you know, 60 degrees. And so you're just like, hey, we don't care what uniforms you have to put on to stay warm. Just be combat effective right uh then you have regular troops who whose discipline is at a really high level these are you know your typical u.s army type infantry troops and they are committed to uniformity standardization everyone doing the same thing everyone in the fight together those will have uniform well uniform uniforms then at the very bottom are things like irregular militia um like poorly trained reserves and they would usually have a mishmash of gear not because they're getting the gear that's optimized for them but because the only gear left is sort of mishmashed suboptimal mix of old and new um you actually saw some of this in uh, the National Guard that was deployed to D.C. two years ago, um, a lot of the photos showed them as having uh, the green OCP pattern, but then a lot of um, ACU patterned uh, ballistic vests, uh, IOTVs, that sort of thing. Yep. So again, you can see this is what the drone is seeing. And it's pretty nice because it's like if you have a sense, if imagine you have a map with distances you can measure and you can literally just watch, look at this and say, oh, here's this woods. We know the Russians are in this place or that place or this other place. And you can look at it on a map and you can go, they're right here. They're at this exact location. And then it's very easy to put rounds onto them. Yeah, I'm here to tell you guys, uh, okay, this probably is like, what would I, a 60 millimeter mortar? This is not a 60 millimeter mortar. These are all like about right for, for 60 millimeter. But no, this, this thing is much, much larger, whatever it is. All right, uh, we're going to pause it there. I think the rest of this, uh, they just break down and talk about some of the things that I talked about. Uh, they talk about the use of the Vulcan rifle. Um, that's the other indicator. It says these guys are pro Ukraine special forces, right? These aren't old Soviet rifles. These are modern um, AK uh, conversions that are lighter and more compact. Uh, anyway, guys. Thanks so much for watching this. If there's other videos you want me to check out, man, let me know in the comments. Again, as I've pointed out, I don't really like to do stuff that's too edgy um, or, too, or too grisly, rather. Um, and I hope you guys found this informative. Again, my goal in all this is to give uh, everyone more context into what they're seeing. Let them understand what the soldiers might actually be doing, right? Uh, you know, this isn't me saying like, oh, you know, I'm trying not to glorify combat. I'm trying to make it real. Um, and that's really important, I think. So again, thanks so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.